second attempt now that I've cleaned up the streaming and video editing and stuff, I'm going to talk again about map metrics. So if we go to Google and we type map metrics, Tom Tom. Uh, we get this thing, Map Metrics World Innovation, TomTomGlobal.com. Um, what you want to do is go to the Layers panel at the top right and select out of these median count data sources the latest data you can. So in this case, it's OSM 2022-03. Um, and you can see that it's loading a bunch of tiles with green and red pixels on them. Um, and it's not being the fastest thing in the universe today, but I'll come back to that in a second. First, let's describe what this thing does and why. So I'm using Paint just to uh, use it as an editing interface to make, make some, I don't know, technical points here. Imagine you have a GPS trace where you start at the top with this red circle and these red circles all represent GPS points. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And you again, you start at the top and you end at the bottom. And uh, this is from someone driving a car, let's say. And I just picked this screenshot of some random place. It's not important at all for the example other than to illustrate how map metrics works. Now let's say you choose a route or a route from the top to the bottom. So you go to a routing engine and you ask it for a route. And we're going to do the route in green. Let's do green, a uh, really thick route, just to make it clear. And you go to the routing engine and you give it the location of the first GPS point and the last one. And the routing engine comes back with a route that looks like, uh, even that's not thick enough really, is it? Let's see if we can make it even thicker, can we? Size, no. Well, how can we make this stand out a bit more? Maybe black? Yeah, that's better, I guess. Okay, so let's say you go to the routing engine and the routing engine says you should do, let's say this. So the GPS trace clearly comes down this road, they turn left, and then they go down this road that seems to run alongside some sort of railway or something. But the routing engine says, no, we think you should go down here south and then turn left here for whatever reason. And this could be a good route. It could be a bad route. Um, we aren't so interested in whether it's good or bad. Uh, what we're really interested in is the difference between the two. That the GPS follows the route down here up until roughly here. And then it diverges and the person drives this way and goes down. Whereas the route says continue and go this way. What map metrics does effectively is, uh, I don't know, let's try purple, is try to measure all of these distances. So in the beginning, the distance between the center of the GPS place trace and the route is very low. So I'm drawing little purple lines here, just illustrating that the GPS points were a little bit off and these aren't gonna be perfect. But then the lines get very far, ooh dear. I did not mean to make that purple. Let's do this and try and correct that. And uh, now I've screwed up the other one because it's still selected. Uh, I guess I'll draw another one and see what happens. So if I draw this one and then I make it purple, that works good. All right. So then these ones are far away. So these, these first five GPS points are relatively close to the route, but then we start going up quite significantly. So what you can see is uh, that that one's actually relatively good. You can see that these points, these four points are measured highly. They're far away from the, what the routing engine said that you should do. So um, what MapMetrics does is it buckets these all into Web Makeda Zoom 16 tiles and if there was a tile, uh, I'm going to screw up all my lines again, but let's pretend, uh, let's use this box. Let's use this. Uh, how do I undo? Uh, I'm going to use transparency if I can. Is this transparent? No, that's white. Uh, life is not going to be kind to me on this. 
And let's see if this will let me do it. No, Phil, that'll do. So uh, let's pick yet another color. Uh, what's that? Whatever that is. These ones, if, I don't know, let's say the tile was like there, something like that. These ones would be relatively low. So we might color this tile green if this is the only data we had. But let's say that there was another Web Mercator tile underneath it, like roughly here. That would be red. So this one would be green. Um, and I guess if we could do this again, although it's going to sort of destroy everything. So roughly speaking, mm, oh yeah, because I haven't actually set an interior color. Uh, let's do solid fill. This one would be green, roughly speaking. Ooh, yep, green, definitely green. Good. Please commit that. I don't know. I hate this thing sometimes. And the one below it would be red. So if we drew another one, let's see if it'll let me do this without breaking everything. This one would be red. And the reason this one would be red is because all of those distances are far away. And the one above it, the distances uh, would be green. Sorry, the color would be green because the distances are low. And this is just one GPS trace. So it could be that this person came down here and they turned left and went this way because they are much cleverer than the routing engine for some reason. It could be that this road is closed. It could be they went there for just some random reason. It could be the routing engine is broken. We don't really, we're not being prescriptive over why that there is this differentiator. All we can say is that there's a difference. Now, if you just have one GPS trace, this isn't going to be very reliable. It's not going to be very useful. If you have a lot of GPS traces and you average over all of them, then it becomes useful. Then it becomes useful and valuable. And that's why some of these tiles are red and some of them are green. So if we go to map metrics and start picking some area uh, where the tiles are actually loaded, let's say, you can see, oh, excuse me, you can see that some of these roads and areas are green and some of them are red and this is exactly like the example i just showed you except instead of just one gps trace there's lots and lots of them um, and there's some a little bit of other magic that happens so uh, a long gps trace if you're driving for a long time will get split up into lots of little segments um, amongst other things there's some other magic that happens to try and ensure the consistency of the data but basically what this is saying is that in green areas this is where the gps matches um matches the routing engine and the routing engine i can't remember what it is but it's one of the open source routing engines and it's using lsm data um and the red areas are where the gps does not match so what we can do is a live ish demo and try and figure out um why these things are red and being a live demo i've not practiced any of this so uh, we're going to run into some examples so here's an area um there's two red areas on the screen now osm is being slightly slow to load uh, but you can see there's a red area here and there's a red area here that i'm interested in um, without looking at aerial imagery i can guess this is probably a driveway this is probably a dirt road for this area uh, and similarly with this, but we can go find out. Um, let's start with the small one because it's simpler. If you click on it, uh, you get a bunch of information. Uh, these are the tile numbers, which aren't particularly relevant. It just says that the Zoom 17 Web Mercator tile, I guess it's 17, not 16, is this and this. The average distance of the GPS traces in this tile from the routing engine is 157 meters. So that's pretty high. Um, it says that you're quite far away on average and the median count, which just is a, a biased measure that um, multiplies it by how many traces are there, is a lot higher. So if you have two cells, two of these cells that are both 157 meters away from, on average, from the, uh, from the traces, but one of them uh, has, let's say, 100,000 people drive through it a day, and one of them has 10 people drive it through a day, you want to bias towards the 100,000 people because that's going to have the most impact. It's, if you fix it, it's going to show, uh, it's going to be fixed for as many people as possible. Whereas if we click one of these green ones as a comparison, we can see what that says. So this is 
The average is only two meters away, that's why it's green. So it's much, much, much closer, and the median count is much lower. And that's actually what we're displaying here, is technically we're showing the median count, not the average or the median. We're doing the median multiplied by the count. So, uh, bearing in mind that the OSM tile server is, as ever, being slow, we can click on this and edit in ID. So this will take us directly to that tile, uh, load up ID, and there's a little bit of magic that has to happen because uh, this won't quite match exactly, so we have to use a little bit of intuition to see where it's measuring from. And because the tiles aren't loading, it's a little bit slow, but you can see there's the end road here, and uh, there's some highway track looking thing here. And then there's a building with two others to the southwest. So it's somewhere along this road with a couple of those buildings. So I think it's this this area here, because it's off this road and here's those buildings, and as I thought, it's a bunch of dirt road driveways. So the correct thing to do here is to, I don't know what this would be. You can see this is actually quite complicated because it's not just one driveway, it splits into two, it rejoins here. There's possibly this is some sort of farm or something. Um, you might want to consider moving these buildings and so on. But at the very least, what we can do is uh, try and fix some of this. Maybe these don't officially join. Uh, I'm going to call this a driveway. Maybe that's not accurate. Maybe the correct tagging would be something slightly different. Uh, and then I'm going to do this. And these don't actually seem to meet as far as I can see in the aerial imagery here. And then, I don't know. We could do this forever. But the point is that uh, we try and fix it. So let's hit save, add a driveway based on metrics. And there's a bunch of warnings that we should fix on time. I'm gonna upload that and see what happens. So that's our first example, this little one here. Um, I'm gonna skip this one because it's almost certainly gonna be identical to that uh, and try and find some other area of red that looks I don't know, entertaining or something. Um, it's difficult to do it because I know that a lot of these are just going to be the same story. I'm trying to figure out how to get some different areas. Well, one thing I can do is I can tell you that if you go to an inner city area, uh, let's say, well, here's Colorado Springs, where you have these red cells in cities, it's going to be much more difficult to figure out what's wrong. And the reason for that uh, is pretty simple. Um, one, there's many more roads. So that example that I just did, there was basically one road going through the tile. There's nothing to really consider. This road, there's one, I mean, depending on how you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's say on the order of 10 roads in here. It's hard to figure out just from looking at aerial imagery what could be wrong here. And that's, Pretty much our only other available source would be aerial imagery because the GPS data is um, a little bit more difficult to make public because there's privacy concerns and so on. But it could be there's a, uh, it could be the road was closed for that month. It could be that there's a turn restriction wrong. It could be that one of these roads is in fact one way streets. So for these ones in inner cities uh, to look perplexing, unless you spend a whole bunch of time on it and maybe visit the place in person, I can tell you that in my limited experience, uh, these these are highly accurate. These are probably red. These are almost certainly red uh, for a reason. Um, however, the exact reason is hard to figure out. It can be very hard to figure out. Um, so tend to avoid the cities unless you live there. If you live there, you can go spend a bunch of time and figure it out. Uh, but for the rest of us, it's not, not super valuable. Um, what would be nice is to find an example that looks like some sort of misalignment. Now misalignments are interesting. They'll generally, <clears throat> they'll generally follow a road, but they will be bright red. So this is a good example of what might be a misalignment. So you can see the red tiles follow a road. Um, and you can see we have bits of green, but an awful lot of red. Um, so Picking this corner, just because it's a nice feature, we can again click the tile, get a bunch of information, and edit on ID. Uh, this one's finished that we were just doing, so I'm going to close that. 
and look at the aerial imagery and see what's wrong or what could be right. Well, you can see it's misaligned. So this, this now becomes a story about how much you want to trust the aerial imagery. So we have two sources that say the road is misaligned. We have map metrics, which says for some reason, GPS data doesn't follow particularly closely this road. The median, at the, the median distance is actually pretty high. I mean, two kilometers is pretty high. Uh, the median count is absurdly high. And this is high because this is a, this is a, looks like a state road. So it means there's a lot of cars. Um, but it says, hey, this is bad. Now your second source that says this is bad is this aerial imagery. Typically, you might not want to trust the, image, the aerial imagery because it can be wrong for 52 different reasons. The projection can be wrong. The thing can be in the wrong place. Uh, it can be old. There's lots of reasons the GPS is wrong. But what, what we're doing here is we're actually being told we're getting two signals that this is wrong. The aerial imagery is wrong and also Mapmetrics says it's wrong. It's still possible that there's a third problem. The third problem might be that the road was closed uh, it could be that someone accidentally marked this road as one way for some period of time. But what you would typically do uh, is you would realign this road. I'm not going to do it for a couple of reasons because I'm not super confident about it, but that's a good example of misalignment. You can see it's continually misaligned in a lot of this. Um, I guess we could turn on a GPS layer if we have any GPS layers. Uh, I haven't used ID in a while. Let's have a look what overlays we have. OpenStreetMap GPS traces. We can cross our fingers, see if anything loads. No. Uh, I guess the other thing that we could use to try and verify some of this is some different aerial imagery. So we're using Maxar Premium and we could switch to, I don't know, fire service, forest service, I should say. And we're out of luck there. USGS. Well, USGS is actually a lot closer. Uh, Try Bing. Bing is closer, but you know, not great either. So I don't know, unless you know this area, but it's clearly these sources all disagree or they have some amount of a disagreement. So let's go find one that might be a bit clearer. Uh, let's see. Well, this looks, this looks messy. So here's another area where everything's red. Let's pick this intersection because it's a nice point that you'll be able to identify on the satellite imagery. Hit edit on ID. And yeah, I mean, you can see this is pretty disastrous. So this, I'm much more confident, is just misalignment. So we can see that well, this Monarch Road is just way off. It's probably imported back in 1776 or the dawn of man or something. Um, but you'll notice that there's no red tiles on Monarch particularly. And the reason for that is that there aren't tons of GPS traces going that way. So uh, we can still see it's wrong, but we can also still see all kinds of missing things. There's missing driveways and roads and so on. We can see that this is pretty epically bad, uh, but you can also tell uh, just from looking at this thing that there's a lot of nodes. Uh, and I don't remember in, no, let's not do that. How do you move something in ID? I don't know but you might want to move this entire thing and then fix everything here. So this is a good example of where, look, there's a whole missing road here, look at this. Uh, this is a good example of where Mapmetrics is telling you uh, that there's a problem. And yes, there are lots of problems there. So those are some good examples. Let's try and go somewhere completely different. Well, uh, I don't know. How about somewhere down here and see what tiles load? Uh, if the map metrics tiles don't load, we're gonna be have some issues being able to figure out anything. Let's see if the internet's any good. You can also try a different month and see what happens. So there's a bunch of different reasons these tiles cannot be loading. It could be my internet. Although it seems to be good. Um, could be the tile server's down for some reason. So what I'm gonna do is just reload and see what happens. See if this loads anything more cleanly. 
could be that the data is missing. Oh, there you go, some sort of browsery thing. So you can see this stuff is loading now slowly. Um, and we can try and do, try and look at some of these red cells. Again, I've got no idea what's going to happen and see if this is useful. Now, of course, aerial imagery is our concern. So if the aerial imagery is terrible, if there's lots of trees, if, uh, uh, I don't know, there can be a lot of reasons where we can see some red cells and we're not gonna get a lot of help here. Um, yeah, this is not being very helpful just because the slowness of the, the task server here. But we can still, you know, we have some data. I'm just not seeing a ton of red things. There's definitely bits and pieces. Maybe another another good example might be India if the oops tiles load. Let's have a look. And just sort of cross our fingers and hope that some of these things load. So where is the developer console on edge? I don't know. More tools? More tools. Developer tools. Look at that. Bang, 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 bang. Everything is failing. Servers have responded with 404. So probably what we're going to do is try a different month. So this is not ideal. Can I clear this stuff? How do I clear it? Who knows? I guess I can just A equals one and see what happens. All right, so, and then I'll move the map, see if that loads it. Nope. All right, 2022 or two, we can reload. Yeah, lots of broken tiles for some reason. However, some are now loading. So this is really not ideal. Uh, but let's see if enough loads that we can do something with it. Okay, yeah, this is completely reasonable. So hopefully this tiles work better for you, but you can see lots of, lots of red areas. Um, and if we zoom into them, if the OSM tiles load, which they do, you can see that this is another good example. So this is another one where, in this particular case, uh, there are, my bet is, pretty much people traveling between these two points and there must be a road and uh, it's not in the OSM data. And this happens all over India. Um, it also happens in other places like Australia where there are lots of 4x4 four four backcountry type roads. Uh, so this is another good example. So let's see what we get for aerial imagery and then we can sort of cross our fingers. So there you go. Um, there are places where map metrics is not going to help you because we already know everything is um, requires help. So what I mean by that is if you know the India OSM data, if you spend time with it, then you're going to figure out pretty quickly that there's a lot of this stuff and it covers the whole of India. India is a big, very populous place. Um, so in a sense, map metrics isn't going to help you because you already know that this data has a lot of issues. Um, but if you're trying to prioritize, if you're trying to figure out where to get editing done, if you're, you know, bored, whatever it is, then map metrics can help you because it's going to tell you uh, where the people are. So while you can see that there's lots of missing roads here, you can see all kinds of missing roads might be a strong term, tracks, whatever they are. Um, what map metrics can tell you is this one is important, right? Uh, this one's important because people use it. Uh, so from trying to lose my bearing a little bit here, but roughly from the top of this intersection over to this hump here. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna let me do the data. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure it's this road that we're thinking about. Uh, this at least allows you to prioritize based on where people are. And so if you have a editing team, if you've got 100 people doing this, or uh, you're just bored on a weekend or whatever it is, at least we can give you some data of where to look. And that's really the point of MapMetrics, um, is to help prioritize. We can tell you exactly where the problems are. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I think that's it. I mean, the other interesting thing that you can play with is uh, you can download the data set. 
So uh, if you're so inclined and you know how to write software, you can download, I think it's a big CSV with all of this data. Um, the backgrounds are configurable. They're all these, the standard OSM backgrounds. Uh, you can go back in time. Largely going back in time is not relevant for this use case because you want the most up-to-date data you want. Um, in this case, again, you want 2022 to 2023. There are some comparison data sets and we can see if these are gonna load. I don't know if they will. They are, good. So the comparison data sets are, are interesting because they can show you where the change is. They can show you where things got better or worse uh, month to month. And um, this is really once you start to get a bit more advanced in map metrics, this will tell you that, uh, I might have this the old way around, but the wrong way around, but I, I think you wanna focus on the more orange than the purple areas, if I remember correctly. They're the places that have got uh, got worse or the scores have got higher over time. But again, I might have that the wrong way around. So if you start to get to an area where everything is looking complete and everything is just green in map metrics, then you can turn on the comparison data set and uh, have a little bit more fidelity. You can also pick up these layers here. And if you pick two of them, then you can compare them. So like I've got two maps here and I can pick different layers. So I can pick the comparison uh, let me see. I could pick the latest map there and on the right I could pick some comparison over here and you can see that uh, again if you're a map analyst, a GIS type person then you can really start getting into the nitty-gritty of, uh, of comparing these things um, and if you really want you can get away from the median count which again is the median of those distances you can uh, go look at the, the median itself and the average rather than the median multiplied by the count. Um, but I suggest, especially if you're starting, you just stick with the median count. And in fact, if you're starting, you don't have to do any of this stuff. You should just um, open up the website, go to somewhere you know. I don't know. Where is this? Goodland, Kansas, I think. Is this going to be Kansas? Probably. And then pick the latest data set that you can. Um, so here you go. The tiles are now working again. So hey, if I live in Goodland, Kansas, I believe, the things I'm going to be concerned about first are this road out here, this road out here, because these are very strong indicators and they're gonna be easy to solve. And they're gonna be easy to solve because there's nothing else there to fix. So if we go down here, um, well, okay, this is actually more exciting. I, I don't know why this is broken. Maybe because this is marked as private or something, we can try and edit on ID and, and have a look. Yeah. Okay, there's no road. Well, you can see clearly that there is a, at least a track linking these two county roads. And I can tell you that people definitely drive down it because it's red. So if I lived here, I would add that road in. Then I would go up here and this is probably a similar story so again, I can, ooh, no, it looks like there's a road there, actually. So I click it, edit an ID, and let's see what this does. Or maybe that's not a road. Maybe it's just the boundary between two fields or something. Yes, it's just the boundary. So it looked like a road on the rendering, but it's actually, look, it's missing. It's a highway track, or maybe it's a county road or something. People clearly drive it. So I would fix both of those first because they're so clear. There's nothing else there. It's very easy to figure out what's wrong. Um, for these gradual ones, these get more interesting. These usually indicate that there's something broken up to a point and then it gets better. Uh, here, it's hard to tell what that is. We can have a quick look uh, again. Close that other tab. Uh, yeah, so hold on. now I've lost which tab it is, so I'm going to double check and do this again. Okay, so there's a T-junction here, County Road 23 and 67. 67, so that's 23. And there's, you can see there's a road there. Um, the reason I suspect that this isn't all completely red is what, what this is tending to mean behind the scenes is that people are driving from, let's say, here. They go out here and then they come back. Uh, preferentially to just driving across the entire road, which means they don't usually go over here because this is green. 
they rarely go in these areas, but they're usually coming out to the middle for some reason. So that they're, they're driving out here and then coming back or vice versa. Maybe they're going from here, driving out and coming back. Um, maybe there's a, a thing here like this, this water stream thing that's important or they're checking on a weather station. Could be, could be anything, but that's the reason that this is probably not red all the way through. This red thing, probably a driveway. Um, in these farm areas, you can get areas where farmers go out. Uh, they'll have some maintenance facility or something. Um, let's have a look. We'll look on the map and see if there's anything obvious. Yeah, look, there you go. So that's the reason that cell is red, is there's a couple of buildings. There's a dirt track out there. So I would add these buildings. I would draw that red that, uh, track in. That's why that's red. Okay, so once, let's say again, so... I live in this Goodland place and I go fix all these things that I just showed you. Um, then I would start looking at this downtown area and I would start looking at this. This is I-70. This is a freeway going across. Um, without even looking at because I've done this a few times, I can guess what the problems are here. So this red area this is probably parking lots. So you can see that this is directly off a freeway. You can see that there's some um, gas or petrol station amenities here. There's motels, hotels. So almost certainly what's happened here is you can see someone's put in the parking lot for Walmart. All of these parking lots are missing. That's my bet. So if we click and edit, um, we're going to see lots and lots of parking lots and concrete areas and so on so yes you can see there's parking all around the motel six there's parking around this probably restaurant there's parking around uh here and here um that's why those are red um so if i was super interested i lived here i would go out these parking aisles um having a quick look see if there's anything up also obviously wacky so this is probably a gas station, if I had to bet. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Often gas stations will have large turnarounds at the park of them. So this, you might not normally add this, but this probably will show up in GPS data if you have it. Um, uh, uh, similarly, here's a gas station. It's ginormous. It has the turnarounds for all of the, the trucks. Um, so that's that area. Then, then I would start looking at this. And the reason I leave this to last is again because there can be multiple reasons why uh, this is red. Um, I'm going to pick this outlier. These these outliers are useful to get started with, a bit more motivational. So this is a red one where only half the tile uh, has you know significant map data. It has we have a parking lot here. We have this building. Um, so this is going to be slightly easier than if it was here where there's more going on. I can tell you just looking at it that what's wrong is probably there's parking aisles all the way around this cluster of buildings. It's probably parking aisles all around here. It's also possible that there's new development here. Uh, and so that's going to depend on how old the aerial imagery is. So we added an ID again, open it up, um, and let's have a look. So just to remind myself, parking area, cluster of buildings. There it is, it's down here. Okay. So yes, someone has put the parking area in here, which is great. You can see there's another parking area here. The aisles are missing. So the routing engines won't be able to, won't typically use a, a, just a dissociated parking aisle here. Someone needs to put a, probably a second aisle down along horizontally here and then going up and looping back. All these walkways might be interesting to add. Uh, you can see this big parking lot. You know, have to add all of those parking aisles. So that's a good starting one once we're in the city. But let's keep going and try and find someone that's going to, uh, so try and find one that's going to be complicated. Um, this one up here looks more red than the others. This one down here too. I'm going to start with the one on the edge just because it's sort of interesting. Click on edit. Um, we might be too far zoomed out to figure this out. So let's zoom in just to make sure our spatial awareness is good. So we have a, uh, cul-de-sac with a building at the top right and then we are down and left of there so here's a cul-de-sac with the building um, the tile that is red that we're looking at is really this block between second and fourth 
Washington Avenue to whatever that is, I can't read it. Um, so let's have a click on this and see what happens. Washington Avenue is this. Uh, is that routable? Yes, it's an alley. I suspect the main thing that's wrong here is when you look at something like this in suburban America, the, the sort of two main reasons that it can be read. The first is obviously you're missing, I don't know, 30 driveways. So you could have all of these driveways. Another one is sometimes you will see, and I don't see it here, but sometimes you'll see a cut through. So there'll be a cut through, like you could imagine that there's a cut through from here to here. Um, that someone drives their, their car into here and then they have an exit out the back. Actually, this might be a good example, this house right here. I'm just inferring this could be entirely wrong. But let's say this garage, this is a garage and this opens at both ends and the owner likes to drive their car from here in and then they drive it out the, the back to the alley and they don't like to back up. They just like to go straight through. Um, that could be a reason. Um, and you're not going to know, you're not going to be able to figure it out. Actually, this looks like a cut through right here. That looks like a cut through right there. Um, you can tell because the the earth is uh, all brown there instead of green. It's very possible that people use that as a cut through for some reason. Um, so if I had a bunch of time to do this, I would add all the driveways. If I lived there, I would go and figure, figure it out, drive around, bike around, walk around, do some local surveying. These ones are going to be good ones as well. These, these driveways that are semicircular on these corners because almost certainly these drivers drive in one way and out the other. Um, and that's going to lead to a large distance over time. But these are just ideas, you know, maybe I'm wrong. You're not gonna figure it out unless you look. Um, I, got, I will look at this red one uh, in just a second, but I wanna point out there's also a pattern of redness east to west here, and there's a pattern of redness north south here and here. So you might have something like, if you're a local, you know that this road is one way north, this road is one way south, and you can see on the map that that's not true. It might be something like that. You'd need to be local or look at some other source to figure that out. Um, so the reason that this is red might not be that it's inherently a bad tile. It might be that these tiles are all bad because of some systematic reason, like uh, what is this is Center Avenue and Main Avenue. It could be very, very easily that Main Avenue is one way north, Center Avenue is one way south, or something like that. And then 17th is one way east. So that's gonna mean all of these are red, and then all of these are red, let's say. But this one is doubly red because it, it, has, the, it has both errors in it. And so this might jump out as a tile that you want to work on first, but that might not be actually the best thing to do. It might be to go figure out systematically why this is all red and why that, that north-south is red. Um, I'll go edit it on ID just in case there's something that jumps out that's obvious, but I doubt it. So we have a gas station here. It's the corner of 17th and center to main uh, with this long building here. Um, so here's that long building. 17th domain and we can just look for anything that's obviously bad because because I might be wrong um, So just from looking at the parking Main Avenue is not one way because you can see there's parking on both sides going in different directions You can see that someone does have one of those cut throughs. I talked about earlier. That is definitely a cut through uh, If someone's driving that, you know 20 times a day or something that will change it uh, you can see that almost certainly these are going to be something like self, st self uh, storage units. They're going to be industrial areas, something like that. So I might put a parking aisle down the middle here, parking aisle here and connect it there. Um, similarly, there's going to be cars parked around here. So that's potentially another reason why this is, this is red. These buildings all look great, but uh, for routing purposes, the cars are going to be slightly confused. Um, because the cars will cut through here and that the routing engines don't know about it because there's no roads. So if I had lots of time, I would be adding all of these roads, uh, all these uh, driveways, cut throughs, parking aisles, and then map metrics would probably go green after time, after, you know, how, whenever it's updated after a month. Here's another interesting one. This, this might be a cut through through a building. So you could imagine, like this could be completely wrong, but you could imagine that this is a barn or a mechanics or something and cars can come in and out both ends. So if you drive through it, it's gonna throw the routing engine off because there's no road there. Um, 
And let's go back and have a look at anything else. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. You'll see that my metrics does a fairly good job of throwing out airports. Those get cut out. Um, my metrics tries to throw away bicycles, boats, planes, things like that, and just leave you with people who are driving cars. But it's always it's not always 100% effective. Um, it could be bad for some reason. Um, and yeah, I think I've covered an awful lot of use cases here. Here's another terrible one that you can see. And so, you know, in summary, what Mapmetrics does is try to, super interesting actually, this, I wonder why this looks like this. Um, uh, in, I'm gonna come back to this, but it, in, in summary, Mapmetrics, what it does is it tries to highlight things. So when you look at OpenStreetMap, it often looks great. And you have no idea what's actually wrong because you're looking at the map and it looks fantastic and you don't know what's wrong. And what map, map metrics attempts to do is be one avenue that you can uh, have like a glance into what is wrong um, by highlighting these things in red. I'm gonna, I, I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is here. So what we've got here are lots of windmills and these windmills are on a private road. And you can see it's private because of the dashing. And the private road, although the OSM tiles are being a little uncooperative today, the private road comes from here, goes across, goes south, and then east again. And the reason these tiles are all red is not because those GPS points are bad. They're actually probably pretty good. But what's happening is, Someone, like the person servicing these windmills or a farmer or something, is driving down here and everything's perfect. They drive down here and then they're coming off this way. That's my guess. And my guess is, and again, the tiles aren't loading, so it's hard to see. My guess is it doesn't connect. And so if that road connected properly, again, maybe again, it's really difficult to see because they're not loading. But if they connected properly, probably what's happening is the route would show up as correctly jumping across here. But if there's a disconnect in this road, in this, even though it's a private road, if there's a break here for any reason, then the routing engine, let's say you're starting from here and you end up over here, the routing engine is going to send you all the way down here, all the way, and then come back up. And so all of these traces, all these points are going to be red, um, not necessarily because the road itself is bad. It's probably good all the way, but because there's that break. And, you know, we could go figure out why that break is. Um, and again, this is just a hypothesis. Maybe it's wrong. So I'll make this the last one. Uh, but let's click on this and see what happens. Well, at first glance, I'm wrong because everything seems to connect. Seems to go through. So I don't know. Um, you know, this is sort of wacky. Uh, you can see that the distance is high. Maybe this should all be realigned to here, the, the border of the field. Maybe this should all be realigned south and this stuff realigned north. And then this curve needs to be realigned. This is also possible. Um, it's a little bit difficult to tell. But at least we know that there's a problem here. We do know there's a problem. Our matrix is usually very good at figuring out where things are bad. Um, but we don't have an exact good reason why this is so. We have some good, you know, good hypotheses. There's one other reason it could be bad um, that's worth noting. Our data set, if we go back, um, is from 2022-03. You, 2022-03, and um, you know, give or take, that's two months ago. So this data could be great now, but it was broken two months ago when when the analysis was done. Um, so there's little, little that we can do for that other than hope that data is updated. Uh, one last thing, you can click help. Um, there's a bunch of documents here. There's a PDF you can read through. Uh, I think we're finally done. Yeah. Anyway, map metrics. Let me know what you think.